Our next definition we're going to talk about is what's called a spanning tree. This is a tree that is sort of embedded within your graph. I think it'll be easiest to see with an example. If I draw in some edges here in purple and specifically highlight these, I'll give an example of a spanning tree. So here's an example of a spanning tree. Notice I don't have a root. I didn't specify a root. I just kind of drew some edges. It, it is, is a spanning tree because it touches every vertex. It spans the graph and it's a tree. There are no cycles and it is connected. So if you look at this, we see that every single vertex is connected somehow and there are no cycles. So all of those vertices with only the purple edges, none of the black edges is a spanning tree. There are any number of spanning trees. Let me draw a different one for you. We will do the next one in orange. Another spanning tree might be this here, where I need to connect V6, it looks like. And I believe this connects our vertex. We have V1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 7, 4, and 6. Yep. And it has no cycles. Therefore, this is a spanning tree. There are any number of spanning trees within a graph. There are some which are more helpful than others. We will talk about several later, including the depth first spanning tree and the breadth first spanning tree. And if you take a further course in algorithms, you may talk about a minimum spanning tree, which is another type of spanning tree that is embedded within a graph. These trees can tell you lots of useful information about the graph that can be used for discovering various properties in application. So a spanning tree on its own doesn't look like it's much, but it is a useful thing in several applications.